amazing videos talking about this house arrest and about other things. Um, remember to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications and share this video for family and friends. Hope you have a good time watching my dad's videos. Bye. Right, good morning guys. Good morning David. Good morning Greg. Great to see you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Um, an amazing first video that you guys have put together as part of the documentary series that you're doing. We had, had a tremendous amount of great response from it. Yeah. Along with that, we've had a, a few um, negative comments. So we <laughs> thought we'd put those to bed today, David. Yeah, I'd appreciate that because, you know, I, I'm, I believe that if someone reaches out to me and sends me an intelligent question, I like to answer them. But I'm answering a lot of the same questions, Greg. So what do you, we, we told them basically, they talk about your family, they talk about this Cold War thing you did. So what the hell, what am I going to tell people? It's better that you tell them. Well, I think, you know, they should be um, an episode in themselves. And, you know, maybe episode seven and eight, we could do what I did in the Cold War. And you'll go, seven and eight, oh no. Seven and eight, man. that long. Um, and then, you know, I can talk about how the flat lie British royal family at attacked true royals um, with drugs and all sorts of psychoses and stuff, and they get family members to attack each other because they work on the paradigm that um, uh, you can't handle uh, the enemy within. So I've got an older sister who's been undermining and attacking me all my life, uh, sometimes quite violently like with physical violence. So <clears throat> like when we moved house to another city about three and a half hours away in 1975, we left her behind. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't seen her since 1975 really, which is what, that, that's 45 years ago. I've seen her a few times in between. I saw her for about two minutes in 2002, didn't really speak. And then prior to that, I saw her maybe in 93 once. And then I saw her in 98 couple of times. I bumped into an in England in 1988, uh, saw it for about a week. And that's about it, really. It's, it's a very um, disparate family. And even <clears throat> they got four she tellers and said, what's, what's going to happen with the family, you know? This is in like the 70s. And they're going, oh, you're just not going to have anything to do with each other. It's one of those families that just drifts apart and has nothing to do with each other. And they're absolutely right, you know? I don't have anything to do with any of them. I don't know where they live. I don't know their partner's names. I don't have my phone numbers, uh, and you know I've really put in a lot of effort having no contact with them because it's just destructive. It's really destructive. Yeah, yeah, I get it. it right? You know, it make it makes sense as well because you know people have, they've asked me. I said, look, you know, coming from a, a television background, I've been in situations where I've seen one situation filmed and then how it's edited. And I said, you know, that if, if you can pay anybody to say anything, really. So it makes sense, Greg, that, you know, you pull away from them. I don't believe the testimony, it's just not done in a, in, it's like a scientific experiment. You've got to do it in a, cold, a controlled environment, which is one of the reasons why I did this documentary this way. So it's raw, it's pure, so people can make their own mind up. We haven't done any tricks, any editing, it, you know, this is it. You want to see the raw product of how it happened. Yeah. yeah. You make your own mind up there. So I get it. I get it. It's also very important at this stage to, to bring in, Jack Kidd, who found Greg, and also we've had a number of people who've commented about, well, he might have had an influence because of circumstance, whatever. But first of all, a big thank you to Jack for everything he's done in, in bringing Greg to the table. Yeah. He certainly he's, he boosted my f following figures on YouTube, and it's also given David and uh, Lee and the team the opportunity to put together a, a great documentary, which we've seen, obviously, the first part. Yeah, thanks for that. I, I really appreciate it. It was, um, it was really professional. I watched it on the phone, and it's even better on the phone. You can't see all the micro lines all over my face, you know. <laughs> Never knew I had that many lines. It's like I'd been soaked in a bath for a week. Yeah, but we were up late, Greg, you know, with the, going through. Because, you know, I had, to, I had to ask you a lot of questions, so I knew where I was going to go because you, you, I needed a direction of which what's going to, you know, Yes. So we were up pretty late, two, three in the mornings, most evenings actually, because the information that you, 
you talk about openly is just okay i've got to try and grab that and place that it was yeah. um, we were up late we weren't doing us ourselves any favor up late most nights but jack we were working we were working we were up late we we're actually coming out with ideas like a rango it was about 1 30 in the morning that's really weird that whole story about a um let's go. i just want to say one thing i want to move on to a but i've had people saying oh jack manipulated it let's get one thing straight people if you're watching this no one sees the content, the editor sees it, and then it's me, and then Greg has a look at it, make sure we haven't, um, we're putting out what you said in the right way so it hasn't been, yep. so people understand it. So Jack's role in all of this was organizing everything in the UK for us. So he got all the locations, he got everybody together, he got the accommodation sorted out, and he did an amazing job. I mean, if that's his first time being a producer, the guy's got a natural talent for it because it was one of the most difficult things to do. And he found the subject matter. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. He's, he's a very good connector. Mm -hmm. Let's just get one thing straight. Jack has no control over the content because his producer in the UK and I'm the producer here. So I want to dismiss any of those rumors. He doesn't. And then let's go back to Oranga because that's actually a really good. Story. People have been asking me, how did we come up with the name? Where did the name come from? So. Off you go. You tell that story. Oh well, that's see, that's a whole other episode as well. Um, and see, what a lot of these questions are just asking for the episode information in advance so they can get it for free or put it out on their website first. You know. Yeah, or maybe. So, <clears throat> well, um, Aranga was the name of the avenue where I had this natural high level initiation that was predicted in Faro and just north of Faro in Milru, Ishtoy Palace in the Colonnade Cross about 2000 years prior. So that's when Anubis uh, visited you. Is that, this, is that the address? Yeah, well, that's the, that's the whole place. Yeah. And it was predicted and it's predicted in this 68 column Colonnade Cross that covered exactly 3000 square meters. And I deciphered it and it predicted, it, it showed the coordinates, exact um, two different coordinates to meet at the same spot, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, when, when I saw Oranga Avenue in Mount Eden, I asked a, a Maori elder what it meant. <clears throat> and he said, um, thought about it for a bit, it's quite a tricky one. And then he said, awakening. And this, <laughs> is, this is in 2009, and it's way up north. So he, um, so you know, I just remembered that Oranga meant awakening. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. And, and then, you know, you've got to ask yourself, well, the, 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 there's a lot of um, stupid people on the web and they have their own sites and that, and they make stupid comments about videos that I've done 10 years ago. And they think they're the authority on me. And they just take a snippet out of a video, like 10 minutes, and then they put comments over the top and the comments are wrong and they don't show the beginning or the, uh, the end of the video and they don't show the other videos I've done and they don't buy my books or read my books. Mm -hmm. So they're giving really shallow comments, stupid comments, and they're putting up ambiguous titles. So people look at that video and then go to their website and look at their other stuff. And that's the purpose of doing these little snipey videos contrary to the truth that makes people look at their other videos. Yeah. Um, but there's no cure for stupid and there's no answer for stupid. And if you answer a stupid question, you just get another stupid question. So there's a whole level on the internet just to be ignored. And the, the government loves stupid people and trolls and crazies because they create all sorts of distractions. So they get huge numbers of hits, which is actually troll supporting misinformation. Ah. Uh I had a funny one. This guy said that he talked to you about um, burnt toast that had an image of Jesus on it. Yeah, well, I've seen burnt toast with an image of Jesus on it before, but I actually didn't think that his burnt toast had an image of Jesus. I actually just thought it was two bits of burnt toast. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually he, he said, he said I, I, I sent Greg photographs of my Jesus burnt toast. I was like, I was reading on my phone, I'm doing something else. I'm like, what, 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 yeah. what? Yeah. Probably he probably worked for the CIA and he's off his tits. Well, he sent me a photo of him. He's definitely on the meds. Yeah. And he, he wrote six threatening emails. <clears throat> and um, it sounded like a, a bar fight in North England. 
<laughs> and, then, and then he sends me one acknowledging me, you know, so it's just, just up and down. He's obviously on and off the meds. And just ignore it. I just filed, I've got a file called um, <clears throat> Crazy. I think it's called Crazy. Let me see. And you put them in there. That's good. That'd be quite a yeah. fun read, wouldn't it? Yeah. I just see. I've got, I've got, I've had to um, set up about 50 or 60 different categories for my emails. And uh, so I'll read some of them. Um, you know, the, the uh, message... proven, proven shill, hope, yeah. Facebook content not available, get a few of those. Spiritual loopy, Bible thumpers, family court, not quite right. <laughs> no, he's in the not quite right folder. <laughs> There's a very interesting thing that I did the other day, Greg. I, I was talking to an astrologer. I did an yep. interview with him um, called Philip Daniel My Miles, I think it is. And um, he was, he was uh, you were kind enough to give him your time and date of birth and he's put together quite a sophisticated graph but he, he on the show that i did he was predicting what was happening right now and showing what had happened which was fascinating but he he made a very interesting point that um this is your third attempt where that they the system has blocked you every time and it yeah. always came across like it that it was your right from what he was saying yeah it is my right here's my I just happen to have, because we've had a power cut in the first interview. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Let's get in order. This morning, Charlie forgot to record for 30 minutes. And then we had a power cut. And then we had microphones and speakers not connecting. So in that time, which is about an hour and a half of no recording, um, I happen to have the second, second application to the courts. On, I'm working on it. Right? I'm just going to file and send it. It's on the couch, right? So I got it and put it in a, in a nearby table. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is a good question. People are asking me as well. That's the courts. That's the documents I lodged in the British courts in 2015. Wow. Okay. So oh, I'm just going through it to check that the PDFs have got cover everything. And then, the, you know, the printer didn't work, so I got it working somehow. Um, okay. Yeah, what happened yesterday, you know, so I'm, I'm doing all my court stuff and they don't want that happening. So we had a power cut from midday till 10 p.m. yesterday. So I'm, I'm wandering down the streets trying to get um, uh, superfluous things done, like um, trouser legs taken up, right, and trying to find a seamstress. So I'm walking down the street aimlessly looking for a seamstress, and, and then there's these people who, who come down from Liverpool, and they booked an interview with me. I didn't know because I get so many emails. <laughs> Really? <laughs> and there's a power cut, right? So they drove me to a seamstress, and then we had an Indian and, and a bunch of drinks last night. And then by the time I got back, it was about midnight. Um, so that your interview. And the power cut was over. The power cut was over, right? Yeah. So, um, so you know, that, that was good use of my time. Um, so I didn't get that, um, didn't check my scans yesterday. That's, they don't want that check, right? So I'm, I'm getting my printer fixed. And the guy, the uh, a guy and a girl and another woman, they came up here. And the guy from Liverpool, I said, like, my printer's not working, so I just fixed it like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was brilliant. You just opened up a back container and then another back container, and there's all this jammed paper in it. So you fix that. So I'm, 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 I'm good to go now. It's a good day's work. Fix the brilliant. printer. What do you, Greg, have you been, I haven't had a chance to ask you actually, have you um, been getting any requests for other interviews? What's your, what uh, you, yeah, yeah, I've had. Um, the, the, the hottest person in Australia, New Zealand, um, and the most controversial, has asked me for an interview. So, you know, I'd get sort of, you know, several million hits on TV. Yeah. Like that. Um, and, you know, one of my webmasters is going, oh, you should do it, you should do it. And, and you're going, well, you know, let's, you know, finish the series. And, you know, I, I think I'll finish the series and then carry on, you know, with more information, answer more questions and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, but I want to get the information out so it's, it's presented first so that they can't then uh, cross edit and, and produce stuff on TV that's contrary to the videos because we've got the basic knowledge. I had, uh, you know I had a BBC, a former BBC reporter approach me. Um, yeah. It's quite funny actually, this conversation. She said, um, hi David, um, this is an interesting story. 
And I didn't know who she was, you know. I haven't lived in the UK for so long. Yeah. I said, yeah. And she said, um, <laughs> can you tell me about it? I said, well, watch the videos, you lazy cow. I'm thinking. <laughs> 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 the videos were some out with you. You want me to come over there and spoon feed it to you? Yeah, basically, so, yes. That's, that's what they like. She said, uh, my, um, my uh, Twitter followers are asking me about it. I said, well, maybe they should start following me then, because you don't know. Yeah. So in the end, I just said, listen, I've got no respect for mainstream media reporters, because all you do is, even if we did a, a really great interview, you chop it up, add some music to it that makes him look like the Antichrist or something weird. And then, you know, I said, no. I said, my content stays pure, uncut, and that's how it is. I don't want anybody chopping it up and using it in a negative way because it's just not true. It has to be the way it was sent out because that's the truth. So yeah, you probably will, you probably will have offers, Greg, and it's up to you what you do, buddy, but um, I'd be very careful with that as, uh, as we've talked. Oh, how, how much are you paying me, David? I'm not paying, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't slept since I've met you. I'm getting trolled all night, 100,000 questions a day. Yeah, my life has just become on hold now. I was quite happy. I was just about to start some action movies. Yeah, with Dave and Lee, and then you popped up out of nowhere and ruined everything. I know. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> and then, well, we Charles wanted, yeah, we wanted to put this together really between um, episode one and episode two. Obviously, we'll do more for all the ones up to nine and ten later on. Oh man, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but a lot of them, lot of them I, can, I can just rattle out straight away, straight up and just record it. Yeah, but it's but, no. we we have to do it in the right way, you know, because the Zoom calls are good and everything. But you know, the thing about you, Greg, is the emotion, and when you're talking about something, the Zoom call doesn't pick it up. Sure. And uh, the the camera that we were using, it's that's what we liked. But anyway, we could talk about that. Let's get these out of the way. Let's see how the public reacts. Let's see what they want. If they want some more, we'll, we'll talk about it. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys for this little, little chat about what's, you know, the, the, the feedback from the first video. And after, after we finished our chat, Dave's very kindly uh, given me a little snippet of an introduction. Yeah. I'm going to second part. I'm going to put the teaser, the teaser trailer for the show that we're putting out on Saturday here. So here it is, guys. We hope you enjoy yeah. it. Thank you very much for your time, Greg. You're welcome. All one and a half hours of it. At least. <laughs> At least. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. We'll see you soon. Enjoy the show Saturday, everybody. It's going out. We're going to send everybody an email again. You'll get your links. You'll know where it is. Don't worry. So it's coming out. Cheers. Thanks now. Bye-bye. New, new shelves, everyone. New shelves. Yeah. <laughs> love, love the shelves. After the amazing response of episode one, we thought long and hard about how the viewer could get to know Greg on a more personal level. So, two friends sitting in front of the fire chatting, completely unedited. What he does, he blows my mind up. Coffee with the king. <laughs>